A for loop is a little bit different, but again, it accomplishes the same purpose. Um, so the keyword is for, and then you open up your parentheses, and um, the difference with the for loop is that you have more that you need to do. Uh, for one thing that I forgot, and it's first delete the for real quick, um, when you're doing a for loop, you can, you don't need to have both your var variables already named. You can only, like, for example, I'll take away the y here. So we only have one variable, and that is the variable x. And that is the only variable that we have um, at this time. There is no y. Now, when we create the for loop, inside of the parentheses, you're going to have three statements, pretty much, separated by semicolons. Excuse me. Well, there's actually two different ways to use for loops, but this is the first way. Um, and so the first one you would say is, well, okay, I want a variable y. And so you would create it inside of the for loop. You say int y equal to 10. So you just created the integer y is equal to 10. And then your second statement would be your condition. So y, I mean x, sorry, is less, less than y. Ah, can't talk. And that's your second statement. So the first thing you did was you created your second variable because you already had your first one uh, initialized. And then you said the condition that you want. And then the third one can be an operation that you can uh, that you can do. So we do x plus plus again to um, make it add one to x every time. So really, a for loop is taking like the the do while loop or the while loop and just condensing it. So it's putting all these things. This is pretty much three different things. It's naming a variable, um, setting a condition, and giving it an operation all in one line of code. That's what makes for loops really useful, and that's why I really use them more. And it's really not as complicated as it looks. Then you would create your block by putting your brackets. Um, and then you just put what you want it to do. System dot out dot pr print line. Sorry for that weird noise. X is less than Y. And this will run. It'll run the exact same thing as you can see. What the heck did I just do? As you can see, it's uh, substantially shorter than the while loop and the do while loop in terms of amounts of code. But it'll do the same thing. That's why it's so useful. If we run it, it should say it ten times. Yep, it did. Now, there's another way you can use the for loop, though. Um, and you can actually do this with a do while loop also, but I like to use the for loop. Um, and it's for checking for example valid input or, you know, running a program again. So we're going to do the running program again uh, idea. It's basically using a for loop to determine whether a Boolean variable is true or false. So delete all this stuff. So say we have some code, okay? We have system.out.println. It's just going to be a simple program that says, hello, I am a simple program. How do you do? Well, we're not going to say how do you do. But, uh, yeah. It'll do that. Actually, yeah, you know what? Let's just go ahead and say, print line to make our program look more impressive, and say, how do you do? Okay. So this is our program. Uh, if we want it to, after it says this stuff, ask the user if they would like to run the program again, then what we could, and then of course, if the user says no, it'll end the program right there and then. If they say yes, it should run it again. It should say these things again. We can do that using a for loop. So um, first thing we can do is we can create another system dot out dot out dot print line, and we're gonna say run program again question mark, and we're actually gonna put a uh, dash n at the beginning to skip a line. And so this is just going to ask it, but for, oh, we're going to need some input in this case, but you guys already know how to do that. Import java.util.asterisk. If you don't know what I'm doing, go back and watch my tutorial on uh, scanners and input. So, <clears throat> ah, so what you want to do here is the first thing you want to do is you want to create a variable, a Boolean variable. <coughs> Call it repeat, for example, and set it equal to true. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you would create a for loop by using the word for. And inside, you don't need to put three statements. All you need to do is say repeat. But uh, you would have to put semicolons on either side of the repeat because that's just the way it works. And then you can create your open block. And then after your program, create your closed block. Um, your it's called your brackets. And then just because I'm paranoid and I like everything to be nice and orderly, go ahead and indent those. So basically what this is saying is it has set, uh, I've created a repeat variable, it's a boolean, I've set it equal to true, and as long as repeat is true, it will run this program. Now the only problem is that this sh should run it an infinite number of times. <coughs> as you see, it's running it an infinite number of times. So we're going to stop that, and uh, we need to make it so that it depends on what the user wants to use. 
So first thing, uh, is go back to the beginning of our code real quick and just create a quick scanner. Say scanner scan equals new scanner system dot in. You guys already know how to do this. <coughs> Jeez, what's wrong with me? Mm, excuse me. Okay, so what we want is we want to ask the user for something after we say run program again. <coughs> excuse me. So what we'd want to do is we'd want to create string, because it can be a string, yes or no is a string, and just go ahead and call it yes or no. <coughs> ah, I hate when this happens when I'm doing a video. We're going to set it equal to scan, the name of our scanner, dot next, and it's only going to be one word, because yes or no is one word, so we just need to do that and create our parentheses, and this is going to be asking the user for the input. And uh, we're going to actually use an if loop, and if not an if loop, an if statement in this as well. We're going to say that if yes or no equal, uh, actually this is something you haven't learned yet, but just bear with me. You say dot and then write out equals, and then you're going to say yes. I should probably go over this in the next tutorial, um, and then create your block of code. Well, but this is basically doing is it's taking, remember, you, know, you already know how this if statement works. If statements work, it's going to take yes or no, our string variable, which is the input. And if that yes or no is equal to yes, or in other words, if the user inputs yes, then it'll do this. And this is just something you have to do with strings. Um, if you're using an integer, you wouldn't have to do this, but whatever. So what we'd want is if, the, is if yes or no equals yes, we want repeat to still be true. So we'd say repeat is true. But then we could have another if, not nested, just another if. Yes or no equals no. Create our block. Then, um, wait, I fail. That could have messed up my program. Okay. And then we want repeat to equal false. So what this is doing is that if the user says no, do not run program again, this goes from being true to being false. And if it's not true, it's not going to run this. So it won't loop. So basically, the way this should work, sorry for, I think I went a little bit too complicated past you guys' knowledge in this, is that if we run it, it should say, hello, I am a simple program, how do you do? And then it'll ask us to run program again. If we say yes, it'll say it all again. Hello, I am a simple program, how do you do? Run program again. If we say no, it'll just say no. It'll end the program. And that's pretty much how it works. Um, I'll try to go more into detail about, like, strings and yes or no dot equals and stuff like that. But this is just how to use the for loop to with uh, booleans to make things repeat like that. You could also do this where for invalid input and stuff, but we'll get to that. So thank you. This has been tutorial number five. Tune in, uh, I mean, tune in, what the hell? Check back and subscribe for tutorial number six. See ya.